Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I'm your host, Airsoft Al, and this is a bit of a review update, kind of talking about the stuff I actually have that's kind of going on, uh, especially some of the stuff I'm actually working on for review. Uh, so why don't I just go ahead and kind of talk about the stuff I have for review and what's kind of going on. Uh, the first one being, of course, thankfully I have the part needed coming in to kind of review this gun and again this one's actually one of my favorites because of a certain video game franchise that all of us know and love that of course being the famas and the reason i say you know needing a uh, kind of part to come in is because i kind of need a carry handle rail here to kind of, to literally have the run cam on here and that way i can actually run this in a game uh, again, this is one of those moments of, hey, I kind of need that for the game, and yeah, that's basically what's going on. Uh, I will be reviewing this, you know, kind of doing that thing, more or less. Uh, again, just one of those moments. Now, I, I'm still doing a little bit of research into the FAMAS, um, kind of talking about it, uh, you know, learning about it, especially the fact of, oh, hey, yeah, I know this thing had a really weird, funky, just rail system or not really rail system uh funky like here there everywhere and the development history of it is even funkier like jesus christ so kind of learning about it as best as humanly possible is one of those things i'm currently doing because good sweet jesus there there is a lot about this that i'm legitimately trying to learn about so uh yeah just one of those things one of those things moving on now, another thing I actually do have, which, thankfully enough, I actually got via the trade, the swap meet at uh, Sector 9 uh, during their six-year anniversary event, is, of course, a lovely little shotgun from Elite Force. This is the Tactical Force shotgun, tri-shot shotgun. Uh, again, one of those lovely things of I was able to actually finally get one. I was able to actually have one. Uh, again, one of those things of I this has been on the review docket for a long time and I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time. Uh, I did remove the door bit, so, you know, because apparently that is actually something a lot of people actually do. They will remove the trap door. Uh, a lot of design choices on the gun I'm a little bit curious about and kind of wondering, hey, why did you design it that way? Um, just one of those things, basically. But yeah. This is one of those, I'm going to be talking about it a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Uh, yeah. One of those lovely things. Either way, though. Uh, still a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and talk about the other guns, shall we? Now, another gun I actually got in was an M16. This one was a trade before, and I've been meaning to kind of talk about it, and I've got it kind of done up in the way I kind of like. And that, of course, is this lovely thing. This is the Top Tech M16. Now, it does go by another name, and it does come with all sorts of other fancy stuff, but uh, this did not. The guy was trying to basically do it up like an A3. Um, and I've done my research into these things, and there is a lot to talk about, especially with the buttstock area, and kind of how it's designed, and making me wonder, why is no one doing this? Or maybe they are, and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, but yeah, no, the buttstock is actually the most interesting damn thing about this, and how it's designed. Uh, the other thing, though, is that I'm basically turning this into the Magpul PTS M16 again, except I'm turning it into an A3 instead of an A1. Um, and yeah, I've kind of done it up in that sense. Uh, I'm leaving the buttstock as is for now because, again, not a lot of stuff there that I can do, basically. Uh, but yeah, again, kind of leaving it as is. There are other things about it that I kind of don't like, especially when it comes to the... Uh, mm, charging handle and how it's designed uh, but there are some other cool elements about it that I will be talking about especially when it comes to this thing right here even the price tag it has I'm going to be talking about it and believe me there's a lot I'm going to be talking about like dear sweet Jesus there's a lot I'm going to be talking about but till then ladies and gentlemen uh, this is kind of what I have and this is how I have it set up I haven't done anything internally to it just this is what I have for it basically so moving on to the next bit the pistols okay so no there is one more thing a SEMA Thompson I have this Thompson M1A this was a trade for a gas gun uh, I just need the proper magazines for it this is is, is a SEMA uh, the King Arms and the SEMAs they're definitely a bit different uh, and honestly I can't really tell the difference between the two which is kind of sad but uh, 
Again, this is supposedly a SEMA. So, yeah, one of those things. Uh, definitely going to be interesting to run, especially trying to figure out how to put a frickin' run cam on this thing. No, I'm not bolting any rails to it. I'm probably just going to put maybe just, maybe just tape the damn thing on here and then tape the battery compartment. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to figure out something. I will figure out something. Now, to the pistols. Now, in terms of handguns, I do have quite a lot that are on the review docket. One of them being, of course, this, the Vicar Tactical 1911, which is basically just a Wii Tech 1911A1. Uh, the big thing, though, is that uh, the safety's kind of missing, which means that, yeah, this is kind of not being held in by damn near anything. However, it does still work, uh, and it does work still, so that is the good thing. The magazines, however, are kind of questionable at best, so I'm probably going to try and get more Wii Tech magazines in uh, to basically run this as a pistols only type setup one of these days. Kind of like a Vaqueros or a Gunslinger type setup. Uh, haven't decided yet, still trying to figure out, hey, how I want to kind of do this basically. Uh, but yeah, this is one of a few handguns I'm reviewing. Another handgun is a High Kappa, this one of course being a Tokyo Marie Split Slide High Kappa. This one legitimately has actually worked out pretty well. It's, it's not really hurt all that much. Uh, legit just a lot of fun in it and I legit have no issues with it. Uh, I've got more than enough magazines to actually do a pistols only type deal and I might in the future. I just haven't, you know, kind of decided yet, more or less. Uh, the only issue I've had with it is just kind of some issues with the magazines themselves. There have been some magazines where, hey, you know, it doesn't really feed right, it'll lock up, it'll... I've, I've had a few things, just, just minor issues with some magazines. Um, Outside of that, though, again, just a very fun little Tokyo Marui high kappa. Uh, just one of those things. But either way, though, this is one of two high kappas I have that are on the review docket. The next one is a John Wick gun. Ah, uh, yes, the John Wick handgun. This one is sadly giving me a lot of issues. Uh, I don't know what it is. I legitimately don't know what it is. But, for some reason, it will lock up, it will be sluggish, it will just do a lot of basically not wanting to cycle properly. It is very sluggish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically wait until I get more lube, because apparently I've lost my bottle of lube that I usually do use. Uh, I'm probably going to get some super lube and basically spray this, more or less, in the areas, clean it very fucking thoroughly, and then go from there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait and see if I can get this thing to basically cycle properly, more or less. Just kind of get it to cycle, more or less. That's that basically what I want to do. Uh, I may just leave this in soapy water overnight and let it do that. I don't know yet. Again, I haven't decided. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you an update when I can review this and I can get it running because legitimately I want to run this in a game and I want to see this actually perform as it probably should. Moving on. Finally on the handgun docket is the Wingun Grand Power Excalibur. This is a fully licensed half blowback, uh, weird combination of the Wingun non-blowback blowback system. Now, I did use this once in a game, and it did work out fairly well. I didn't need another magazine. All I needed was more magazines. However, the magazine itself, sadly, broke. Which means that now, CO2 just spews everywhere. And as much as I hate it, that is a fact of life. That this broke, basically. This is now freely just moving all over the place. Meaning that I cannot use this until I get a new magazine. In which, thankfully enough, there is a new magazine on the way to review this. And I will, once again, take this to a game. And the offer is still up on with me and Foggy going head-to-head -head if I can't officially run this in a game. Sadly, we couldn't chrono it. It was just one of those things of, hey, get on the field. And we did. And I just used this in game, basically. But it wasn't a fresh thing of CO2. It was a CO2 that had already been in there for a while. And, yeah. That's more or less what happened. Basically, this is based off of the KC100 series body and system. So, yeah, if you know that system, you know what it is. 
But either way, though, I can't wait to actually see what the actual FPS and jewel count is out of this sucker. And even if I cannot officially run on the field, I am going to challenge Foggy to a basically to see how fast either one of us can pull the trigger, basically, uh, on the clock. So, yeah. Can't wait to see how that goes. Now, there's a lot of other stuff I actually do have on the review docket that are not gun-related and, of course, are either media-related or just, you know, gear-related, essentially. Now, I am going to be talking about some stuff, especially recently, me using this new helmet system that legitimately I am impressed by and I kind of want to talk to you guys about and definitely show you guys. But, outside of that, though, uh, a few other things down the line in the future, as well as kind of talking about the cyberpunk guns I actually am working on and kind of the projects I'm doing from there. Uh, outside of that, though, not much else. Now, I know you're asking about the grenade launchers and if the grenade launcher reviews are happening. To answer that question, yes, they technically are. Uh, the only reason they're not happening as fast as I'd like them to be is because, simply put, I need more grenades. And I will be trying to get more grenades in the future. And basically having them so that way I can use the MGL and the, and the 302, basically. As well as, of course, acquiring more stuff in the future to be able to run other guns, such as my JGG3 here, that I have yet to actually use in-game as well as a few other guns that legitimately I'd like to run more of. Uh, I probably am going to run more guns in the future, probably some more cool things in the future. I just haven't decided yet, that's the thing. So, yeah, that's about it, really. And if you want to help out with the content I produce and basically other stuff down the line, consider checking out the links down below. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Airsoft Down. I shall show you lovely, lovely people in the next review. Or at least, in this case, the reviews coming up. Till next time. Later.